Unfortunately, dynamic arrays do not work inside tables. You get spill errors. However, if you put your dynamic array outside a table, you can reference it, but you need to be a little bit careful. And there's a couple of little tricks that might help you. Let's go. Let me show you what I'm aiming for, and I'll show you how to build it. This is a dynamic array, okay? It's a list coming from another table. And I wanna be able to pick a work order, such as work order A, and then just show the items. There we go. But if I pick work order B, there are more people. I get a nice warning. I click show again, and there's the extra people. Okay, if I click D, there's more people again. I click the show and I get to see exactly who's there. If I click A, I've got all these blanks. So I just click show and it goes back to what I want. So it would be nice if the table just automatically expanded and collapsed based on the dynamic array. That currently isn't possible. So this is my next best approach, my workaround. I'm going to show you how I built it. So let's have a look at the data. It's just this table. We've got dates, we've got different work orders, different people and the hours they've worked. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a little drop down list um, to be able to pick a work order. So I'm just gonna use the unique function. So equals unique, go and select from my data, from the work orders. So click on that cell control space bar and press enter. Okay, that's my list. And I can even wrap it in a sort. So if they weren't in alphabetical order, then they would be. Okay. And I'm just gonna call this DDWO for work orders. Okay, or even type the full thing in if it helps the next person to understand your model or your report. Okay. I'm then gonna format this. So I'm gonna go right click, red and italic. That's how I name, how, how I flag my named cells. And I do that a lot. So under the home tab, I've even got it set up here in the styles. You can do it via the drop down, make something the style you want it to be and click new cell style and call it named range or something like that. Okay, so that's how I've done that. Then I'm just gonna click on, oh, actually I'm gonna copy um, this named cell Click on here, go to my name manager and paste, control V and press enter. That is only referring to cell D6. So now I go into my formulas name manager and I change this to rather than referring to D6, refer to D6 and I press the hash. That then refers to this dynamic array. Okay, I can click close. Now you could do that all in one go in this name manager box, but I quite like the little shortcut of pasting the name and things like this. Let's go yes. So then in theory, if I go here to uh, data and data validation, and click on the data validation icon, I can then select a list. And from the source, I can either type in equals DD work orders, or if for some reason I can't remember, I don't want to be typing, you press F3. It comes up with a list and there we go, DD work orders and OK. And now I have a nice drop down list. And I'm just going to format that with a bit of uh, yellow. And if you want to be really fancy, OK, under the home tab, you can go to the borders, and go more borders and you can make the Pick a dark gray and go for the bottom and the right to make it look a bit more 3D-ish, especially when you turn the grid lines off. Okay, so there we go. We've got a nice little drop down. Right, I would now like to bring back all the people, okay, who have worked on work order A. There's actually a little work order A up there. There's some more people working down here. I want to get a list of those. So I'm going to use a filter function. Right, so equals filter. 
filter this table, and I'm just going to filter the table of names where the work order equals, and I come back to my list of validations, this cell here. Okay. But I don't want to be doing it on this list and validation sheet. I want to be doing it on a different sheet. So what I'm going to do is this. Okay. I'm going to cut this cell, paste it on my report sheet somewhere. And because I'm referring to that list, it just works really nicely because I'm referring to that named range, DD list. See, it still works nicely. Um, okay. So this is my summary. Oh, summary all exists. I call it summary two. Okay. I'm just going to call this selected work, one word, work, order. Okay. And make that a named range. Quick shortcut, control shift F3. It's the same as using formulas, uh, create from selection, right? It's a shortcut for this little button. And what it'll do is name this cell with that name. So, I like those two, control shift F3, using the name in the top row. So this cell is now named selected work order, or I could have just copied, clicked on it and pasted it in there. Same thing, all right? Named ranges, really useful for writing formulas. So equals filter. I wanna filter the data, just the names, control space bar, okay? Where the work order, back here I don't want to help thank you where the work order equals and I can just start typing um, selected work order there we go all right so those are all the names of people but you notice Amy appears twice because because back in the data here Amy's up here and also worked on another day down here just got to wrap that in a unique so here we go we're gonna go in here and wrap it in unique and you could sort it as well if you wanted to but that's all good perfect and then if I change my work order to B I get more people if I change it to C I get different people and D more people again okay right now for whatever reason I would like to reference this with a table maybe the table structure is something you really want maybe you need to use a table for um, referencing with Power Query or whatever it might be, okay? There are use cases for this rather than just adding formulas that reference the dynamic array. So all I'm gonna do is create a little table um, and I'm gonna call it name and hours. It's gonna be super simple. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight a bit, bit here. Control T, my table has headers, click okay. I'm actually gonna make this really long. Okay, super long table and go down a thousand rows or whatever you need. Right, and then I'm gonna, just gonna pick a slightly different color. I'll go for this one. Name and hours, perfect. And then I can just go equals and click on that cell and it goes down. Right, which is great. And then I can do a sum ifs, equals sum ifs. All this stuff is standard sort of Excel things. Oh, sum ifs, sorry, I've got to sum the column. So I'm gonna add up the data control spacebar, the hours, where the name control spacebar is, and I type a one. Why do I type a one? Just to save me having to edit the formula and get rid of the uh, sheet name, I just go and delete the one and click on Amy instead. Okay, right, that's great. And it'll work nicely and check it out if I pick B, it gets longer if I click C, it gets shorter if I click D, and everything works. The only thing I'd like to do is make it neater. I don't want these zeros showing. I want to hide them. Here's the little trick, a couple of little tricks. I'm going to insert a couple of helper columns to the right. Okay, so right click, insert, oh, sorry, to the left, the other right. Um, insert table to the left, or if you want to do something a second time, F4 on your keyboard. See, I just clicked F4, it added another column, it just repeats your last action, as well as putting dollar signs in formulas. So F4 is pretty cool. Right, so I want to basically say, um, um, show data, okay? So equals 
if this row okay, equals zero, like in this one down here, then I want a little dash. Otherwise, I want to show it. You could put the word hide, whichever. Okay, so it's saying show, 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 hide. Beautiful. And then I can add a slicer, right? So I can go to table design, insert slicer, and pick the show data option. And now I've got this ability just to show or show all, but it's really the show button that I really care about. So I'll just leave that there and we'll come back and make it look a bit fancy later on. Now, the issue is when I pick A, okay, and I click show, great. But when I click D, I don't know that there's new rows and I need to click show. I need a warning. I need a big warning saying, hey, there's new rows, All right? So what I'm going to do, let me just show everything. So I'm going to add a little helper to tell me whether the row is hidden or not. And then another column to say, hey, if the row is hidden and there's data, put a warning. So let's do this, is hidden. How do you check? What formula can you use to check if a row is hidden? Well, the one I'm going to use is aggregate. So equals aggregate. I can do a count A, okay, which is just count the text in and ignore hidden rows, right? Number five. And what do I want to count? Well, just this name doesn't matter, right? If the row's hidden, it doesn't count it. So it doesn't matter which cell you click on, as long as there's a bit of text. Okay, count A looks at text. So there we go, all the ones, right? And if I sum this up, equals sum, because the row's visible, it's just counting it all up, okay? There's 119 rows. But check it out, when I click show, there's only eight visible rows because all the other rows, the hidden rows are all showing zero now. All right, which is pretty cool. So I can use this. I'll just show all again. So I can say um, alert equals if, and I'll do a little and, and. If this, so that doesn't equal zero comma, and this equals zero. Okay, if those two things are true, then hidden data. Otherwise, and I'll just put a little dash. Okay, and now what I can do is, and what I would really do here is actually, I'm thinking on the fly as I'm going, I just put this up here, okay, hidden data. Here. and I'll reference it much better to do much better to do this this way I was being a little bit lazy there oops apologies these are one of those things I would normally just go and edit out of the video and not show you my mistakes but I'll show you my mistakes today I'm in that sort of mood okay click on that f4 okay why did I do that because now I can simply do equals count if this column equals hidden data. Okay, and I can go to my little format not zero, which is essentially my shortcut button on my quick access toolbar, links in the video, um, to say um, conditional formatting, cell value does not equal zero, it'll change. So let's check this out. If I go back to A and show, great. But now if I go to D, I get a warning, hidden data, okay? because there's some names and the row shouldn't be hidden. So I click show and now it's zeroed out again. Awesome, okay? And then I just did a little bit of tidying up. I just hid these little helper columns. I left this hidden data one over here and I don't hide columns, I group them. So under data, you go to group and that groups them. I also go to this tiny little, click away, go to this tiny little icon in the corner, click on that, and I untick these boxes. And what that does, it'll shift this little sign over to the left-hand side. I just prefer that. Okay, click okay. There you go, my button's over here. I just like it over there, okay? 
that's just hiding those little helper columns. I've got my drop down. I can pick C. I can click show. There they expand. But if I click A, oh no, let's go for B. I think there's more in B. There we go, one row hidden. Click show. There it was, Lucy was hidden. And then I can fancy up my little slicer by going to slicer, right clicking on one I like the color of. Let's go for this green one and I'll duplicate it. And I'll call it my slicer or something, you know, my slicer. Um, so the whole slicer format, no outline. Okay, click OK, click OK. I'm gonna go for two columns at the top here. There we go. And then I'm gonna right click and get rid of this heading. Right click, slicer settings, display header off. Click OK. And now I've got this nice little box here for my show hide selection. Okay, oh, see the border still on? I always get caught by this. You've got to click on your slicer and then apply the one you created. Here's the one, my slicer. And I'm going to turn off the headings, turn off the grid lines. And I've got this nice little drop down. Click show. I've got this nice little drop down. Click show. There you go. Look, I hope you find that useful. Um, I certainly have used it a few times in recent projects and it's really quite handy. It would be nice if the dynamic arrays just expanded the table automatically. That doesn't happen. But this sort of thing could be a nice little workaround that's really simple for people to understand what to do. Okay, let me know what you think. Love getting your comments. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.